Central Bank of Nigeria bows to pressure, increases individual and corporate withdrawal limits to 500,000 naira and 5 million naira. Federal Executive Council approves more than 160 billion naira infrastructure spending for works, housing and transportation. Plus talks in Nigeria and across the world advance few days to Christmas. This is Business Express on a network service of the Nigerian Television Authority, the NTA. And we are reaching you from Abuja, the nation's capital. I am Leah Kating, Baba Tunde. Compliments of the season. The Federal Executive Council has approved more than 160 billion euro for expenditure towards enhancing the nation's critical infrastructure in the works, housing, and transportation subsectors of the economy. 87.3 billion euro of the amount is to be expended on the construction of Section 1 of Mina Zungiru Tegina and Kontogura highways under the tax credit scheme covering 94 kilometers. The second was presented on behalf of FEMA. It's for the award of contract for the construction of the Sherry North Road in Lagos that connects Ogun State and is an alternative route between Lagos and Ogun to the Lagos Ibado Expressway. It Improving electricity generation and distribution is a priority of this administration. And the House of Representatives is on the same page with the executive in that regard. The House of Representatives approved 99.5 billion of federal government power company limited budget for 2022 to fund the Zamen's power agreement. This will augment the work that the government is doing to fund the Green Power Initiative project which is popularly, popularly called the, the Siemens project. Tenor is 40 years, moratorium on principal repayment three years, and pricing interest rate 9%. The Ways and Means advances by the Central Bank of Nigeria to the federal government has been a funding option available to the federal government to cater for short-term or emergency finance to fund delayed government expect, expected cash receipts. The Central Bank of Nigeria has reviewed up for the limit in cash withdrawals made by individuals and organizations. The upward review comes after the National Assembly asked the bank to considerably adjust the withdrawal limits in response to public outcry on the policy. The new directive, which was communicated through a letter addressed to all banks on Wednesday, now allows individuals to withdraw up to 500,000 naira weekly, and organizations can now withdraw five millionaire weekly the bank had on december 6 announced a new policy limiting over-the-counter cash withdrawals by individuals and corporate entities to 100,000 naira and 500,000 naira per week the statement added that in the event of compelling circumstances where cash withdrawal exceeds the limit required for legitimate purposes such requests will attract a processing fee of three percent and five percent for individuals in corporate organizations and in such cases the financial institutions are directed to obtain some information from the customer at the minimum and upload the same on the CBN portal created for the purpose. And still with the Apex Bank, it says uh, Godwin and Mefale, the governor of the CBN, will not appear before the House of Representatives this Thursday. Instead, Aisha Ahmed, CBN Deputy Governor, Financial System Stability, will lead a team of the Apex Bank to brief the House of Representatives at Thursday's plenary. A letter from the Central Bank addressed to the House and read by Speaker Femi Bajabi Amila on Wednesday regrets that the governor is out of the country on official engagement as well as attending to some health challenges. He is therefore unavailable to attend the briefing. Let's now see the official exchange rate for major currencies.
on the program, we continue with the discussion on third quarter GDP growth, which the National Bureau of Statistics, NBSA, grew by 2.25% on a year-on-year -year basis in the third quarter of the year 2022. Our guest and economic analyst, Dr. David Aervo, it is good to have you back on Business Express. Thank you very much. I'm uh, yeah. grateful. Thanks. Okay, uh, great. Now, yeah. so before we go into the topic, actually, because of the flurry of activities that took place within the last 12 hours, we wanted to get your position on the revised cash withdrawal limits yeah. that was released last night. And of course, it was released simultaneously with, with. the security features. Oh, uh, the withdrawal limit. I would like to say uh, the initial withdrawal limit should have been maintained, which is lower. Which now they have a, increased it to uh, half, a million. half a million, which is which is still uh, it's like going back to the old system. The best policy that CBN will have done is this cashless society. I mean, cashless system. In the sense that in other climates, in other developed countries, you don't see cash moving around uh, anyhow on the street. But in this our society, cash is not available to the bank, but available to the individual. And if it's in the hand of the individual, it will not be productive. And secondly, it will cause inflation. So the cashless system will have been the best for economic development. But CBN has bowed to it. And I hope that they will pick it up later and make sure that it is more stringent. Uh, the politicians are saying, no, you want to spend money, but as far as I'm concerned, money is not politics, and politics is not money. Money should not be used for politics. It depends on what the capacity, the trust, and the, uh, the relationship you have with the people that should motivate your coming in. I, I seriously disagree with that. Now, the limits that is presently approved, well, we still go a long way to limit cash withdrawal from the banks and with the uh, stringent conditions of uh, reporting conditions that will be required if you want to exceed it. The, that will leave the banks with much money. Imagine a situation where the bank, the CBN printed 3 trillion naira. And it is only 1 trillion that is in the votes of all the banks. The remaining 2 trillions are in water tanks, sewer tanks, all manner of uh, bad storage system. This money are not being used and they are not productive. I do cash. I do cash. And they are causing inflation. Because if somebody says uh, uh, this thing was one tin of milk was uh, uh, 200 naira yesterday and it's now 500 naira and he has a cash behind his car, he will, he will pick it and buy. And that continues to inflate the system and it's not good for the economy. Yes, so, then um, the bank will not have enough money to lend for productive sectors. And that will also cause us a lot of. Uh, economic hardship okay. because we'll, be, we'll become, uh, I mean, import dependent. So now, basically, the, the limits, where whichever direction it faces, mm -hmm. is going to have its implication on the performance of the entire economy. economy. Seriously. We're already seeing a GDP uh, figures for the last quarter mm. at 2.25%. At falling but down. Yes, yes, mm. yes, they're already falling down. So with what you're observing now, uh, where are we coming from? And where are we headed in terms of the performance of the sectors of the GDP? Okay. Now, the sectors of GDP that uh, contributed uh, better is still the oil sector, even though its uh, contribution is in the negative, minimal. in very minimal, and it's in the negative in the real, in the real terms. Mm. But in the nominal terms, because of the volume it normally attribute, I mean, uh, uh, accumulate, it's hap I mean, it tends to. Uh, be sh to be seen as the largest contributor. The next is the financial and insurance, the finance and the insurance sector. And uh, the manufacturing, I mean, the agricultural sector contributed 
the contribution is 20 point something percent, but in the real terms, mm -hmm. it's in the negative. Now, what is real term and what is nominal? In the real terms, you apply inflation rate to check whether what you say you contribute is really what you contribute. And most of the real terms in this last GDP statistics are in the negative, which means that they are not good for the economy because the inflation is still very high. So, well, the, the best thing that the country can do, which of course uh, has not been paid attention to, was the manufacturing sector. Because we are not manufacturing anything, then we are import dependent. And when you are import dependent, it weakens your currency. And of course, it weakens your economy. You become dependent. And of course, you can also, if you are uh, import dependent, you can also be importing inflation from other countries. Because it's what they have that they will sell to you. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that the government should uh, please emphasize on. Let us look at the basic things that will make us a manufacturing country in this world. And those basic things that is very, very necessary for now is the steel sector. Once Ajakuta starts working, which I converse massively for, and of course I am a, a proponent of, uh, seeing that we work out for money to revive Ajakuta. Once Ajakuta starts working, we will produce a lot of industrial machines that will be important. Now, while we're looking at all that, we'll also consider some of those things like electricity, for instance, that has affected um, the, that has affected the manufacturing sector. We look at other other infrastructure like the roads, the transport system. Yes. How do you see this? Now, if out? you have the Ajakuta steel, as I was talking, if we have the Ajakuta steel, it will contribute. It will, in fact, it will make rail transportation very very easy because they'll be able to produce the rail gauge once they are producing the rail gauge it will be easier by the time Jakarta start producing steel i mean uh, liquid steels it will make it i mean the cost of produce i mean of uh, laying rail, railways rail lines will be very very cheap but as at now since we are importing people to do it for us and they are bringing in their goods i mean their materials to do it for us we are paying through our nose at the rate of 52 to 55 million dollars per kilometer. So um, let me just take you up on that on this real thing. Yes. Why do we need to import people to do these things? Don't we have Nigerians who can do them? I'm asking this on the back of the fact that I know that there's a Nigerian out there mm. who is a major player in the train uh, network. Uh, train, train science. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Now, when we have. Uh, when we, if we have the materials here, and we have the people here, it's easier done. But when we don't have the material here, and you have the people here, these people still have to depend on foreign countries to bring in the materials. And if you want to do, I mean, uh, contract uh, a rail to somebody who doesn't have the material, his own cost is going to be likely higher. Mm -hmm. So, when you put up a bidding, ask people to come and quote for a rail per kilometer, you will discover that the indigenous companies will quote higher than the foreign companies because they have to depend on the importation of the, of, uh, from the foreign countries. So that makes it difficult to depend on the engineers we have here. But it's, it's, it's not really now to the fact that we cannot have a rule a contractual rule that says come you are having the contract in china but you must work with our nigerian partners exactly the local content rule with the local content rule yes mm. so that can solve the problem of engaging our scientists our real engineers mm -hmm. So um, before I let you go, really, what do you think will be the, 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 the appropriate steps to take with, uh, that the non-oil uh, sector, sector will, will contribute optimally, not just the, the steels now, just mm -hmm. across board? Okay. Now, we want the agricultural sector to contribute maximally. 
We want uh, manufacturing sector to contribute maximally. We want transportation sector to contribute maximally. Let us take these three sectors, for example. Now, if we want agriculture to contribute maximally, and we have to import tractors, all those things, mm -hmm. then we are still in, in, a, in a rudimentary or preliminary stage. But if Ajakuta is working, it can produce tractors. And track, once you are producing tractors, then of course, your agricultural system will be faster. And, you, you, yeah, and it will be massive comma, in a commercial quantity. Now, if you want transportation sector to work, we have said introduce rail, introduce uh, waterways, and it will go. Now, if you want manufacturing to work, most of the manufacturing industries in Nigeria import their plant and machineries from outside. And these are the things that we can produce in Ajakuta. The whole Ajakuta system, the whole Ajakuta plant was erected in Ajakuta. It was not brought in. The CKD was brought in, but it was erected in Ajakuta called the erection base. So perhaps we'll so see Ajakuta if, being at the final stage yeah, now. If we get it done, mm -hmm. if we get Ajakuta done, we are sure, visibly sure, that the industrial sector will, will kick up, will kick start, will, and it will grow exponentially. Okay, I must sincerely thank you, Dr. David, and we are also optimistic because we hear from the government that Ajaokuta still will be a done deal by next year. And so we pray we count down and hope it works. will work fast. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming on the thank program. Thank you very much. More. Thank you. God bless so, you. So, bless you too. Gold prices edged up this Thursday, helped by a softer dollar in holiday thinned trading while market participants await economic data for further direction. What are the prices on the global market? The federal government says based on the reviewed National Integrated Infrastructure Master Plan, NIIMP, $2.3 trillion is needed to close infrastructural gap in the country. Minister of State for Finance, Budget and National Planning, Clem Agba, at the Media Party in Abuja said the new master plan provided the roadmap for world for building a world-class infrastructure that would guarantee sustainable growth and development in Nigeria. He said the country has a $2.3 trillion infrastructural gap and plans to ensure that 70% of the infrastructure stock come from, from the current uh, 30 to 35% is closed by the year 2043. $150 dollars annually in order to quickly fill up that gap. Uh, of course, you know that there's time value of money. So if it's not done earlier, uh, the value in terms of the gap will only get, uh, get uh, widened. He said 24 states in the country have so far accepted the Open Government Partnership, OGP, and were making concrete commitments to develop a culture of transparency and accountability in the gov governance processes and empowering citizens to participate effectively in governance. Stokes in the Nigerian market advanced marginally on Wednesday following market reaction to possible entry of startups as declared by the market authorities. At the close of trade in a midweek session, the old share index rose by 0.12% to close the session at 49,475.43 points and equity capitalization ended the session at 26.947 trillion era. University Press Thomas Wyatt and Africa Prudential led the gainers table, while Japol Mutual Benefits and FTN Coco led the losers table.
And those are the opening figures for this morning and outside the shores of Nigeria, Indian stocks rise as Asian markets uh, show strong economic growth fueled hopes for stock markets. Boston Ever has global stock update. European stocks are heading for a higher open Thursday, building on solid gains in the previous session and boosted by positive sentiment in other global markets. Asia shares traded higher on the optimism on Wall Street as stocks saw a boost from upbeat earnings and a strong consumer confidence rating. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index rose 2.57%, with property and technology stocks leading gains. Nikkei rose 0.46%, while in mainland China, the Shanghai Composite dipped 0.45%. U.S. stock futures rose slightly in early trading Thursday after better than feared earnings and strong consumer confidence data helped boost stocks for a second day. Futures tied to the Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 36 points. S&P 500 futures added 0.18% and Nasdaq 100 futures also inched up 0.20%. For Africa markets, South Africa's GSE Africa Top 40 and Namibia's overall index opened marginally positive, while other stocks are yet to resume the day's session. Both said they able. Business Express. Thank you, Bosse. And before we leave, I'd like to remind you that the Central Bank of Nigeria Wednesday evening officially released the security futures for the redesigned uh, currency notes, the 200, the 500, and the 1,000 Naira notes. And of course, on NTA, we will be bringing those features to you subsequently. And what to watch out for, it is end of year. While you go out shopping for Christmas and other end of year activities, be certain to be watchful where you apply your cards, the people you transact with, and of course the currencies you interact with because there might be some that are, are actually not genuine out there. Compliments of the season. Remember to send in your comments, observations, and suggestions. Also be informed that all previous episodes of Business Express are available on YouTube on the NTS channel. You can also communicate with us via our various social media platforms. The program returns Friday at 3 p.m. I am Leah Katingbaba Baba Tunde, wishing you a wonderful working day and God bless Nigeria.